Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you behind the scene of product form add to cart. How exactly product uh, add to cart is working behind the scene and what are the requirements? Before we jump into the advanced Ajax add to cart, it is important to understand how the basic add to cart is working. So in the previous video, we switched from Shopify CLI to Shopify theme kit. Uh, in this video, let's see how exactly we are going to develop our theme for the continuous of the videos. So now, before like using CLI, we just, we just run the Shopify um, theme self. Now what we have to do is we have to do a theme watch because we are, we are using theme kit. When you run a theme watch, it is going to read your config file and it is going to watch for the theme that you are modifying, which is this theme for me. Now, if I open the config, this is the configuration we did in the previous video. Now to have a watcher for the CSS, we have to, uh, again, like we have to run NPX Run, um, mix watch this one is for the watcher to compile our CSS Tailwind CSS I mean so now our development setup is ready of course this is processing the CSS and nothing much to change let's dive deep and see how exactly this is going to work so behind the scene I did some designing in here but this is add to cart is still here now if I come to my code it is in the main product dot liquid so let me just collapse some of this uh, so we can understand where we are. This is title. This is how we display the price. We talked about it in the previous video. And behind this price, there is something called, there is also a product form. This is actually how you define a product form. You just use that liquid form in here. You pass the product. This is the product that you are passing. And the ID is going to be this ID. What is this? This is an installment. Installment is a sh for Shopify shop pay. Shop pay is like after pay. If you are not familiar with this term, after pay is basically you are not paying the full price of the product, you are paying in a four installments. So if a shop is supporting after pay, they can also support the Shopify shop pay, which is new by Shopify. They see a lot of benefits on after pay. Now they introduce their own project, which is shop pay. This is for shop pay that shows under the price. That's saying you can, in, you can buy this product and pay it in four installments. Next up is the description. I added just a little bit margin top and bottom. This is the custom liquid code. This is collapsible. For now, we are not going to touch it. We will write our own custom. This is the product quantity selector. Great, we have like uh, written this, but I will come back to this and we will refactor it in the future videos. This is the pop-up. Uh, each of them are like forms in here. And let's see. This is the variant selector. They call variant picker. We will come back to this also. It is very important, but for now, let's just continue going for the rest of it. This is no script means if they do not support JavaScript, which this component does not exist, then this one will run. Okay, they have like store availability in here, product rating, all of them are great. This is what we want, product buy now button. So this is buy now. By far, like there is like a product form in here that they have adjust, like they have put in here. Now, if I come to the console and try to add product to the card, let me just do a refresh. By default, since we remove a lot of the codes, we add it to the card. We see an error, something like this, from product form. I'm going to remove that. I'm not going to use this because we are writing our own custom in the future, like in the next video. So this time, if I refresh it. Uh, let's add it to the cart. It is still the same error because it didn't pick the changes. Okay, cool. Sometimes it takes one or two seconds so that we should remember that. Now add to cart. It is adding to the cart and sending a post request to this URL but we see an error. Invalid item, something like this. If you are getting this, you see it is a post request to this URL but it is 400. Means one of the items are missing. So to, to add product to the cart, all you need is one item. That is the variant ID. So if you pass variant ID to the shop, Shopify cart, then Shopify will automatically add the quantity of one to that. So how does that work? If I scroll down in here, let me come to this buy now. You see this product form again started in here. Behind the scene, it has an, a name called ID. This input, it is a hidden. What is the value of this? The value of this is selected variant ID. 
selected or first the reason they use the selected or first is because sometimes the product is automatically selected they say they have selected the size large or medium or small something like that and they put the id we'll we will focus more on that in the future but for now this is the id here is the thing if a form is disabled that value will not be sent to this product form let me show you what i mean so you, you see this is like disabled in here i'm going to remove this for now uh, let's go back to the browser i'm going to come back to the product page i didn't save it i noticed that so here's the thing you see this form it is sending a post request to cart slash at but the input that we have in here for this uh, name it is disabled so if it is disabled then that data will not be sent so i will come to the code i will save it this time let's come back refresh it now you see oh it's still disabled okay let's refresh again the table is gone from this in this input hidden now if we add it to the cart it should add the product to the cart okay it was successful product is in the cart let's go back to catalog to the product and let's add it again now it is working just fine this is exactly how it works like uh, all you need is uh, an input with a name of id and then pass the variant id what is the variant id if i open the same product in a new tab and add the json extension i can see the structure of the product it has variants if each product has variants some of them has one they have like it is called they have default variant uh, since this is the default title this is the id and the product id and product variant is different variant is what shop i want not the product id not this one this is what shop for one so if you want to access that in liquid you will use the selected or first available variant dot id then it will put it in here now what else is like extra in here i'm going to remove a lot of the codes let's remove this loader for now we will add a nicer one in the future what else we have in here these are a lot of codes let me give it a unique add to cart like button so it should be add to cart button the reason I put this is because some apps require an, a unique code for the add to cart run. For example, Facebook, Facebook Pixel. If you want to like trigger a custom event, you have to have a custom class in here. So that is important. We do need a button. We do need this full uh, width button because we are using Tailwind and everything else should be enough for this. And what is this? The last one. Okay. The last one is this disable if product is not available means equal to false then it will disable the add to cart itself this one is the dynamic checkouts the checkouts that you see in here if i come here let's go to the product page these are the dynamic checkout now if it is not showing for you the reason is because you did not add your payment in the browser so if i'm using safari then it will show apple pay for me that is call it dynamic it will dynamically like add me to the checkout let's just go to the checkout now this is all you need to know just add it in here now one more thing if you have like notice this if you add more quantity let's add to the cart then the quantity is not going to work let me show you again i'm removing it let's go back to the product page i'm going to come here now we add some quantity in here three like four if we add it to the cart it is adding one to the cart because in shopify if i come back to this product in here this is one block this is another block so these two should be connected now that's why shopify use like a lot of calculation behind the scene on the product form to make them like connected but with alpine js it is much easy that we are going to connect this with at like a two card in here so let me quickly do that for you uh, i didn't intend to do this but it is important to have it first of all we are going to remove a lot of the codes for example product form is not required i don't need that so i'll come here and remove this product form it is a custom tag and we don't need that all we need is a form that is start in here and this ends in here this is also a div that we need this is a wrapper around those buttons okay that's great what else do we need? I don't need to add an attribute for this. So what else in here? I'm going to uh, initialize 
an alpine component. So inside this component, let's give it a quantity, QTY, something like that, or quantity, whatever. And by default, let's give it one. The value of this one is equal to one. Now in here, let's have an input. Type should be hidden. Name should be quantity. Quantity. And name is very important because this is how Shopify gets it. And the value of this, uh, okay, the value by default, it should be one, but we have to specify an X model also in here. X model is because I want to keep it updated with this QTY. If this QTY changes, I want to update the value of this one also. Now, if I save it, we since this is a hidden item, we cannot change it, right? If I come here, it shouldn't display in here for now. It shouldn't. Now, we are updating it from here, right? So when you update this, I'm going to listen for the event. As soon as user update this, I want to update the input, which is behind this also. This one, this quantity. The name is very important in here, as I said. So how would you do that? You can fire an event, but in most cases, like for me, I don't like the quantity to be separate from the, the card itself. Like this selector should be attached to this. Uh, and like the way they have built it, like if I go to the team customizer, they have this quantity selector as a separate block in here. And boy now is a separate one. So for now, the reason I'm showing you is because I want to show you how exactly like you can uh, modify this. But the thing is, that's going to be very complex. I'm going to do that in the next video. I'm going to add quantity selector directly to uh, buy now in the next video because these are both connected together. I don't want them to be separate. But um, just to finish off, you can listen for an event if someone bring any changes to the quantity and update this one. It is really easy using um, Alpine, but I'm not going to do this one because the video will get too long. But for now, this is all you have to do for this. So uh, I challenge you to do it yourself. If you can't, we will do it in the future videos. But for now, this is all we need. I hope this video has been informative and you understand how exactly product uh, add to card work behind the scene. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.